Welcome. Let's explore theorem and geometry through the theory of vectors. Uh, this is actually appears in volume two of the Thinking Mathematics series on how to use vectors to prove theorems and geometry. And a very nice application here is uh, given by the medians of a triangle. So recall, so here's a triangle, three points, A, B, C. And the claim is that if you draw the three medians of a triangle, that is a line that goes from one vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, and do that for each of the three vertices in turn. Do, 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 do. I should mark these as midpoints. That's bad of me. Let's do that. And this. And finally, a third median. And you, the question is, does it actually go through that point there? And the claim is it does, that the three medians are actually concurrent at a single point. And that point is usually called the centroid of the triangle. Um, I'd like to prove that theorem. I'd like to prove it very swiftly using the techniques of vectors. I'm going to use my illegal approach to vectors, which is actually mathematically valid, but most high school teachers won't let me do it. So have a look at the video on a, what is a vector to see what I'm about to do. And I'm going to prove the three medians of a vector are concurrent, and I'm going to prove something even more, that this red median, for example, is divided into thirds. That's one third of the whole median. And this blue median, that little portion there is one third of the whole median, and this part of the green is also divided into thirds. So I claim the three medians are concurrent and they meet at a point that chops each third median at the one-third mark. Here goes. All right, how, did I, how do I construct this red median? Well, I start at the midpoint of side B and C and through my vector approach, that means I could start at the B and then go halfway along from B to C and that will give me this midpoint. Uh, using my lovely illegal notation. This is half C minus B. So this is actually uh, how much have we got? 1B minus half of B. I've got half of B and I've got half of C. So the midpoint is actually B to C. And I claim then if I go one third of the way towards A, I get a special location that works for all three mediums at the same time. Well, let's get the coordinates at that point. Now I want to start at this midpoint, B plus C over 2, and go one third of the way from that midpoint to A. Well, using my wonderful legal, legal notation that is mathematically actually sound, there it is. There's the formula for what that point is. Well, let's, uh, let's simplify this a bit. How many A's have I got? I've got one third of A, and that's it. For B's, I've got half of a B minus uh, a third of a half of a B. That's a half of B minus a sixth of a B. That's one third of B. And how much of C do I have? Half of C. In fact, it's the same work here, one third of half of C. That's a half minus a sixth is one third of C. So the coordinates of the special point, the centroid, well, the special point, I should say, is this. So if I go from the midpoint of BC and walk half a third of the way along to C, I get to a point with these coordinates. But actually, look at this formula, it's symmetrical. It tells me, I bet if I did exactly the same work, start at the midpoint of A, to, of a and B, and walk one third of the way towards C, it would be exactly the same sort of work, just my letters are rearranged, but in the end I get an answer that must be equally symmetrical, must be this answer. And you know, for the third median, start at the midpoint A plus C over 2, and work a third of the way, walk a third of the way towards B, do the same work, and I bet you get this answer as well. That is, all three medians, if you go one third of the way in, all land at the same place. Therefore, the three medians are indeed concurrent, and here's an actual formula for, the, for that centroid. Uh, for example, let me show you what I mean by it really is a formula. Suppose I tell you that A has coordinates, I know, 2, 3, and C has coordinates, negative 1, 5, and B has coordinates, 0, 9. Then this formula says that the centroid, uh, most people tend to call it G, will have coordinates given by, now this formula, though it doesn't make sense to add points, it, this formula actually represents the mathematics of doing this on each component level. So for the x coordinates, I need a third of the x coordinate for A, two thirds, a third of the x coordinate for B, negative one third, and a third of the x coordinates for B, sorry, I, said, I should have said C earlier, is a third of zero. So it's two thirds minus one third plus zero, it's one third, comma, now do it for the y coordinates. One third of the y coordinate for A is one, one third of the y coordinate for B is three, one third of the y coordinate for C is five thirds, so that's uh, one four, and five and a third. There it is. There's the actual coordinates for where the th three medians intersect in this triangle. Amazing. Um, you can do more work of this ilk by using vectors and prove fabulous, fabulous theorems in geometry and go a little bit further than what Euclid did. We can actually give coordinates to points, special points and triangles and so forth via this vector approach. Great. Thank you very much.